Well, welcome everybody. Uh, this is the session on uh, community development of the sweet semantic system for earth and environmental data. Um, I'll be organizing the session uh, with uh, Brandon Whitehead, who you just heard from. Uh, for connectivity, I won't have my, my uh, video on uh, during the slide deck. And uh, thanks again for, for joining. So to begin with, uh, this is some details about the uh, about us, Brandon, myself. Uh, the agenda can before, be before you get going. Could you um, actually put it in slideshow mode? It's very small on the screen in the mode it's in now. Can I, can everybody see this now? Looks great. Thanks. All right. So to begin with, uh, I'd like to acknowledge. Uh, indigenous cultures and history of uh, local regions. And uh, here you have some information on Brandon and myself. I'd also like to acknowledge uh, Brandon for his input on this uh, on this session and the content, as well as Lewis McGibney, the former semantic tech chair. So the, re the session roadmap is gonna start with part one, which is an overview and history of uh, SWEET. And if, depending on the time, if there's Q&A, we'll get into that. Uh, part two is going to be more about current uh, development status of suite, followed by potential breakouts and Q&A. So some questions uh, I'd like to pose to uh, everybody here include these, and you can find them also at the link on the bottom right here. So what are your research topics? What type of data do you work with? What challenges do you face? What would you like to do with your data that you presently can't? And then that is leaning towards how might SWEET help with those challenges? So in a nutshell, SWEET is a semantic technology and a knowledge organization system. And why should you care? To potentially help with your, with your data needs. And so that's been a topic of, uh, of a number of uh, a number of sessions and uh, semantic technology uh, research. And what problems is it solving, or or what problems can it solve? Why is it important to develop um, for the same reasons and uh, for things like content search and retrieval, and uh, also to innovate. Now, as some background, there's a lot of content here. So very briefly, uh, what are ontologies for anyone in the audience that uh, is not unfamiliar? So there's varied, various definitions of them, and they're sometimes called semantic models or conceptual models. Uh, before the term knowledge graph was coined, um, uh, ontology was effectively the same thing. Uh, the intended meaning is the same. Um, now, uh, some of my work involves cataloging uh, the various definitions of ontology and cognates. So if you go to this link, uh, you'll see some, some of that work. So far, I've cataloged around 90 uh, definitions uh, of only one sense. Um, there's various development methodologies, both automated and manual. And I think that's a very important point because you'll get uh, uh, there's different uh, different approaches um, and uh, there's different considerations and technologies that you'll need to uh, get into. Um, so ontologies can be developed to various degrees, complexity, size and abstraction. And sometimes uh, what it, an ontology is used as uh, Another, another type of knowledge organization system as a taxonomy um, or even as a database. You can house content uh, depending on the tool uh, in an ontology and, ac and access that content as if it were a database. Now, of course, just like any other knowledge organization system, there's pros and cons. And effectively, a, a, an ontology is composed of categories that can be formally defined and structured. And that allows you to uh, create computable expressions for uh, inference and data queries and other, and other functionalities. It can be linked and uh, it can act as a semantic layer. And importantly, uh, when considering use or creation of an ontology or other sort of knowledge organization system, it's important to ask, does it provide the desired or right meaning or the semantics for your data? And naturally, the data owners and creators are the ones who, who are probably the most suited to, uh, to assign that uh, semantic content. So as a basic overview for SWEET, so SWEET is a semantic web, is the semantic web for earth environmental terminology. It's a suite of modular ontologies 
uh, implemented in the web ontology language, but it was originally in the DARPA markup language. Currently, there are thousands of terms across a number of relevant topics for, for I'm sure, everyone in the audience. It was developed uh, at NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory by the late Rob Raskin. Uh, it originally uh, started with using the GMCD, uh, GCMD keywords, and uh, that was decomposed into facets. Um, facets uh, is, uh, is a topic in library information science, and you can um, uh, look that information up as well. Uh, currently, ESIP is the steward of suite. Uh, in approximately 2017, files, suite files were migrated by uh, uh, Lewis McGimney. Uh, this is the link to the uh, suite uh, uh, GitHub uh, repository. And currently, uh, uh, versions 3.5 and, and onward. So for some suite history and background, um, NASA's original uh, development of suite and use uh, included these and other uh, applications and users. Uh, some of you might recognize uh, the SESDI on the bottom right corner here for Earth data. Uh, on the bottom left, we have a number of uh, other uh, users uh, uh, throughout the history of suite since it was developed originally. And at, for some specific examples uh, and benefits and applications uh, of suite as found in the literature, uh, we see that suite effectively provides semantic tags for interpreting data. Uh, it had a, an original emphasis on improving search uh, within NASA for earth science data content. And that includes things from atmospheric science to geology. It uh, is a, um, it's a system intended for interoperability of earth science content and data, and it supports uh, grid interoperability. Around 2011 uh, and following 2011, um, a project uh, called the Next Generation Air Transportation System uh, uh, used uh, SWEET uh, with the NNEW uh, Weather Ontology. Uh, it's a US-based uh, project. Uh, this was actually my first uh, exposure to SWEET. I had an internship working on this Next Gen Air Transportation System uh, and uh, there were different uh, different ontologies uh, connected for this project. In 2012, we see this quote from the uh, cited reference where uh, SWEET was used to uh, support scientific and numerical concepts. Uh, so things like scientific units, and that might be of interest to folks who are uh, involved in the more of uh, the broader set of modeling, uh, uh, numerical and other types of concepts. Now, uh, as a side note, uh, one thing in terms of methodology and ontology development in general is this part here where the uh, where that reference says they believe as few ontological commitments are um, are desired as possible. So that is an important point, and it relates to both technical and ethical aspects of of these sort of uh, semantic models. So some further benefits and applications, uh, we see that uh, SWEET uh, uh, basically enables, enables the discovery of resources uh, without uh, keyword, an exact keyword match, so semantic search effectively. In 2014, uh, we see that uh, SWEET uh, does sufficiently represent the earth and environmental uh, science domain, and it's broad in its uh, topic coverage. In 2021, uh, from some ESIP uh, presentations uh, for some current applications. Uh, we find folks uh, retrieving phenomena and domain information using SWEET and creating knowledge representations um, of science. So stepping back into some of the previous versions of SWEET, here are some screen captures of presentations by the late Rob Raskin and colleagues uh, about SWEET. So uh, with SWEET, uh, version 1.0, we see the faceted uh, structure or a representation of the faceted nature of the suite uh, set of ontology modules. And so you see the various uh, topic areas that might be of interest to the audience, everything ranging from highly generic uh, concepts in which suite acts as a, a, a very abstract uh, ontology model to uh, more specific earth science uh, uh, domain content. And this is actually an area 
uh, where potential subject matter experts, perhaps anyone in the audience, might be interested and contribute to these uh, to these topics, such as uh, geology or oceanography or uh, meteorology and so forth. So suite 2.0 was changed from suite 1.0, basically by uh, making it more modular and increasing the number of ontologies. So we see that it, it increased from 23 to approximately 80, organized by subject, um, small in size, um, and basically varying in, vari in different types of concepts, as you see in the upper left here, from biology to uh, to hydrosphere, to, to all sorts of relevant concepts. Here are some other uh, uh, graphical representations of the broad categories of suite. Uh, and from this, we might be able to identify uh, subject matter experts or others interested in a particular uh, cluster or area of suite uh, coverage. Here we see the faceted approach as well, also broad categories. Uh, and on the right side of this uh, table, on the right column, we see some of the example uh, concepts or terms based on the faceted and uh, broader category on the left. This is a, an application, uh, so an atmosphere ontology in which uh, sweet uh, terms uh, were used also from uh, past presentations. And you can see a number of relevant concepts here as well. Uh, here I, I accessed uh, Suite version 2.0 using an ontology editor and protege um, in order to show, to show to everyone basically what Suite would look like in a, a particular type of editor and some of the, the terms involved. So on the left side here, we have non-relational categories or uh, web ontology language classes, and on the on the in the middle we have relationships, uh, in which uh, Sweet uh, represents its uh, Earth science data. On the right side here we see some use of um, some standard uh, uh, metadata annotations like the RDFS label or comment uh, annotations, and that allows the developer or contributor to Sweet uh, modules to basically provide the human readable uh, display label, uh, such as equator, as well as uh, any relevant content in, say, a comment uh, annotation. Now, going from 2.0 to 2.1, these are some uh, statistics and changes. So, for instance, uh, in 2.1, there was a count of uh, around 4,400 classes and 600 relations. Uh, what's interesting is um, on the bottom right, if you see an example of the development and modeling activity that that, uh, that the original suite uh, developers uh, had uh, conducted, you see a, a modularization and a, a decomposition of very, uh, very long, um, very long names or very long constructs in the ontology, such as the, the top green uh, uh, name, and that is decomposed into different uh, parameter values and different uh, concepts so that it's easier to manage. Here we see some schematics uh, as well of Suite, where you can see some of the relationships between the, the broad aspects or the broad facets of Suite from uh, weather phenomena to, to more, uh, more abstract uh, facets of, such as substance, where you might have oxygen or hydrogen and so forth. And on the bottom right, we also see some of that uh, faceted as uh, aspect all coming together uh, into sort of a, a unified uh, um, a suite. Now, some, some findings from the reference cited here uh, are as follows. So this table basically shows how um, basically some of the benefits of suite. So for example, uh, as a free and open source uh, resource, uh, show some of the user types of suite uh, that varies from project managers who may not be familiar with ontologies to actual ontology developers. Um, it was used to improve NASA search again for earth science data. Uh, and uh, it has been used to, uh, 
in both courses and universities and ESIP as well as other agencies. So uh, from previous presentations, uh, basically some future community plans for SWEET uh, has been to uh, solicit interest in the earth science community and, uh, and interestingly as a community standard for uh, NASA Earth and, and NASA Earth Science content. Now this this uh, slide I found particularly interesting in my research. Uh, uh, you see here basically a breakdown of the directions in which uh, uh, sweet developers uh, were interested in going. So there are various uh, anticipated or desired functionalities uh, as well as capabilities. And a lot of this is uh, is known to the semantic web tech uh, approach. Uh, and if you look at the bottom two rows, you see moving from suite one point zero to two to three, and if, and effectively it's in a direction of increased uh, increased capability and increased functionality. And so we see that uh, we see that intended path where it moves from, from less functionality to effectively machine inference and uh, uh, an increased, um, increased automated capabilities. Now, as a transition to the second part, um, if we take a step back and consider some, some background ideas. So the question is, do you as a data owner or data creator um, need knowledge organization systems or semantic systems in general, right? So what are you trying to achieve? What are your data centric goals? Can knowledge organization systems or even semantic approaches help with that? If not, what are alternatives? If so, will other approaches and technologies help? And other approaches and technologies include things like formal concept analysis, uh, now, uh, natural language processing, machine learning, uh, MBSC, or model-based systems engineering. Now, there are different ways in which these other techniques can be applied to, uh, say, ontologies as a knowledge organization system, um, but they can also be used just by themselves without using an ontology. So this is sort of a taking a step back and, and look, focusing on what are your data-centric goals. And uh, if considering a, a creating or using a knowledge organization system, such as an ontology or a taxonomy, you know, you need to consider things like what are the capabilities and the tools, the implementation languages, uh, and so forth. So some considerations, again, include um, what types of semantic systems or knowledge organization systems, if any. Um, if ontologies, uh, they can be made to various degrees of complexity. Uh, and what I think is very important is the fact that you can automatically generate semantic content or tags um, during various types of processes. So that reflects the fact that there are different methodologies and different approaches to creating uh, and developing ontologies. So automatically, as many people like to do, and manually, which is the more time consuming um, uh, approach. And again, natural language processing uh, is an important uh, uh, is an important technique, as well as latent semantic analysis. And as the previous slide uh, suggested, also consider non-semantic approaches. So, uh, the semant semantic technology and semantic web web approaches is but one among many in the larger uh, in the larger picture of doing something with your data. And based on the, the previous uh, history and overview of SWEET, we, we see an ability and a precedent vision to develop SWEET to a higher degrees of complexity. And that, and that effectively is a matter of will, resources, and so forth. So this is the, the end of part one. Uh, and so I'd like to ask to the audience, what do you find interesting? And you can again answer in the agenda, uh, the, the agenda for the session, uh, or, and, and if that's not in the chat, I'd like to ask uh, my co-organizer uh, to, to put those links in the chat or I can do it shortly. Um, and you can also go to this link here for some sweet questions and you can answer some of the questions there. Um, now, part two here is sweet today. 
Um, so we're going to go through some updates and how to contribute, as well as some feedback on uh, on a survey, and then we'll get into some Q and A. Um, a quick question: um, Catherine Walt Weathers asked earlier what you meant by a uh, as few ontological commitments as possible, and I was wondering if you could answer that question. Thanks. Bye. Sorry, there, I couldn't get to the uh, screen in time. Uh, okay, yes. Yeah, so a few ontological commitments. That so that was a quote from a one of the sources. So uh, we'll have to go back to that uh, slide. Let's find that. Okay, right. Yeah. So this source uh, was basically explaining their experience uh, with using Suite and how it supported scientific and numerical concepts. Um, and this is one of their uh, conclusions regarding uh, ontological commitments. Now, there's a lot to say on what on an ontological commitment is, and so I'd encourage uh, I'd encourage you to reach out to me um, uh, offline because I think we this can get into the weeds pretty uh, pretty deeply. Um, but suffice it to say, there are uh, there are both technical as well as uh, semantic uh, commitments, basically uh, content and data structures that you can inherit. Uh, when using an ontology or when using uh, another knowledge organization system. But we can talk uh, uh, offline or afterwards on this. So currently, uh, ESIP is the current steward of suite, as uh, most people know. These are some links to the GitHub repo. Uh, the second link has uh, versions 2.3 to 3.4 the releases uh, the semantic technologies committee is uh, the particular steward the particular sub steward i suppose uh, and that's a link to it uh, some literature i created this bibliography at that link uh, you can visit that you can also go to the uh, link above at the github for uh, some other publications and uh, it'd be important to know that uh, suite is, is a living work uh, some updates uh, via the Semantic Technology Committee uh, include the following, uh, and uh, the references cited uh, at the end of this presentation. So in 2008, uh, we see that uh, URIs, uh, there was a URI transition, uh, and governance on that was discussed. It was a transition from the web ontology uh, language, a particular serialization, to the turtle serialization. As well as a number of uh, other tasks. Now you can use GitHub uh, for basically contributing. And so this is the contributing link if you're interested uh, and it'll tell you about how you can contribute and you can use GitHub to, to do that. You can also browse a uh, suite on the ESIP uh, core repository, community ontology repository. Here we have a screenshot of, of a portion of the suite content where you can see relevant uh, uh, subdomains that might be of interest to some of the audience members. On the right side, we see a screenshot of some of the uh, suite ontology files, which are subject specific. So, you, so anyone in the audience might be interested in a particular uh, topic here. Now, from a from the twenty twenty uh, survey, um, these are some of the the feedback uh, that, that we received. And so for the next couple of slides, we'll be going through uh, some of that. So for instance, uh, one person was asking about how to make additions or suggestions and merging. And so in answering that question, this is a link to the uh, GitHub where you can uh, do that. Now, as an, as an idea, we can have an exploratory development track where we may solicit persons to say, download versions of suite, uh, merge their domain ontology in order to create potentially innovating and beneficial use cases for both suite and more broadly earth science data. And now I say versions because I think it's important to, to, sh to basically allow the user the freedom to uh, select a version that they may prefer. So they may not necessarily 
uh, be fond of current updates or developments of Suite, they may prefer the original versions, and then they may they may want to explore a path in which they use some uh, in which they explore some application or use case that way. And so, an example is with a 2005 uh, uh, project and the uh, reference cited here. And this process, we may be able to identify some approaches and challenges, as well as desiderata. So some other feedback uh, is to reach out to a wider swath of uh, earth sciences and identify some terminology and explaining how it relates to uh, other terms in plain language. And I think that's, a, that's a, uh, an interesting, interesting point. And in organizing this session, perhaps this is for some first steps and we can brainstorm some, some ideas toward that. Some further feedback, we see um, a need to uh, need for specific maintenance team for different subjects in suite. And so that ties in with the idea of potentially soliciting subject matter experts, so neutral subject matter experts, uh, to help with their particular subject coverage. And I say neutral in, in uh, particularly in, because it should be focused on the subject matter and the discipline. So the idea is to, to have experts with no particular preference or, or desire for advocating a particular product or ontology or way of semantically modeling or characterizing things. So focus on the, on the, on the actual uh, uh, research topic and its data. And on that, and on that subject about subject matter experts, uh, I, I made this pre, uh, this uh, diagram here basically to get at the idea in, in uh, pictorial form. So we see the uh, the data on the very top. Um, we see subject matter experts who, who are the most familiar with that data. Uh, in the orange, we see some particular subject matters. And so the idea is, if we can if we can have subject matter experts who are interested, they can select. Uh, a topic that they might be interested in that Suite covers, and perhaps help uh, with uh, one of the modules of Suite that covers that. Some further feedback. Uh, one person said they'd like to align uh, uh, to uh, their vocabularies and that they like the faceted uh, structure of Suite. So in addressing that, uh, perhaps we can identify some, what some of those vocabularies are um, and with re regard to alignment, um, so that's a point of caution because there's different approaches and distinct groups and activities will, ha will have their own approach. Um, some include doing it automated, some include manually, and in within each one of these, there are different ways to do it and different degrees of thoroughness. Uh, so there are types of uh, harmonization, types of mappings, type and there are degrees of doing so, whether it's partial or, or whatnot. Now, regard, with regard to the faceted approach, uh, certainly. So um, for anyone unfamiliar, if you look up the literature in library and information science, you'll see, you'll see a lot on facets, especially in taxonomy. And so uh, a note on harmonization and mappings. Um, to, to expand on that a little bit. So there are distinctions between those three or more activities, mappings, harmonization, alignment. If you look in in particular, the ontology literature, there they have been characterized uniquely. So here we're just using it, uh, using them synonymously. Um, but care, in is, care is in order when doing harmonization activities. Uh, you can have uh, the same terms, but different intended meanings. You can have ambiguous or impre imprecise descriptions of the harmonized terms or the or the harmonized ontologies and so therefore you should explicitly state the degree of the analysis in your harmonization or mapping activity um, and some examples uh, or i suppose uh, using this diagram here if you consider one ontology or a taxonomy uh, in the red circle here as being linked or using some concept or term from another ontology and so forth uh, in terms of generality and abstraction uh, it's it this it basically it could inherit the content the semantic content and any computable consequences going up that chain so to speak so the formal and informal semantics can be inherited uh, 
to the ontology that you're mapping or you're harmonizing with another or the term that you're harmonizing or mapping to another. And so therefore it's important to examine all the semantics and all degrees of abstraction uh, that, a, that a, a term or model may reuse. Finally, some additional feedback from the survey is uh, to list data sets that are mapped to suite uh, uh, or use suite on specific data sets. So uh, in addressing that, an idea here is uh, uh, we can create a list of, or a catalog of data sets or identify data sets uh, and apply suite accordingly and innovate in that direction. Now, some possible development tasks for uh, anyone interested in uh, contributing to suite uh, include these. Uh, so if you're interested in, if you just have general interest, you can say that in the notes, in the agenda notes. Uh, you can also uh, specify if you have particular interest, if any, for activities or tasks like identifying use cases, creating applications, uh, exploring some of the structural aspects like uh, scoping more precisely some areas of suite, uh, serving as a subject matter expert, uh, quality control for descriptions for uh, content that is within your expert su uh, subject matter, uh, things of this nature. So these are just some ideas for development tasks. And so that's, uh, that is the presentation on the overview of suite and the current state of things. So uh, Brandon, if you have anything to say, please. Uh, Brandon just mentioned to me that he's having some technical difficulties, so I'm not sure he's able to unmute at this time, but there's been a, a very lively conversation in the chat. I don't know if anybody wants to bring up anything in particular from over there. Me again? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is Felimon. Uh, Pierre did mention something about semantic harmonization cluster. So I guess this is a, uh, Pierre, would you like to introduce that cluster to this to discussions here? Um, I, I think it's more uh, Ruth or Gary. Uh, would you like to, or, or should I? I you're on. Do it, Pierre. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead, Gary. No, I was saying it was fine if you do it, but Ruth also might have an idea. Okay, um, no, I'll go ahead. And so the so semantic harmonization is a cluster underneath uh, the, the semantic tech committee, and one of our our goals is to work in in the mode that Robert des, uh, describes. You know, we have these resources that are well developed and cover lots of domains, but others have emerged from different domains, and they have different commitments, and they have different ways of working. And the idea is we're all talking about the same phenomena or trying to. So when Ruth did her sort of overview of the, the cryosphere glossaries, there were so many different definitions that, you know, the U.S. will treat glaciers in a certain way, different agencies in the U.S. treat it a certain way. Um, multinational institutes define different things. The U.K. Um, has a different definition, and they're all different things. So the goal is to say, all right, what are these things precisely? And then let's make sure that you have the really precise terms for what those things are in all of the ontologies that were, were are represented in semantic harmonization. So when we deal with that, like a rock glacier or a glacier without, you know, um, other aspects or permafrost, we're making sure that we're carefully tracing the provenance of those definitions. We create the right uh, label or as close as we can get it. We add comments to, to qualify ambiguity, and then we, we cross map that between suite and other uh, systems out there so that things are uh, on, on different levels of expressivity based on the interest of the participants. And I think, you know, that's a healthy way to go around it, um, to go about it, because then we're in enabling different technologies based on different ontologies or semantic resources, but we're at least more sure we're talking about the, the same things and correcting errors where they do occur, because these things get big. And as soon as you get a, um, uh, an expert group or people who are really well qualified in the, uh, the area of discourse, 
we can get more particular about things. So the chronosphere work is all is all online and it has affected a real change in suite and also in envelope. And now those resources, wherever we did a manual inspection and semantic normalization are now aligned. So you know, you know that if you're using the suite term um, rock glacier or glacier, then it has a mapping that has been uh, manually and expert curated to map other terms inside Envo. So, you know, this is something that we hope to expand. We talked about it in the last session with marine data. We're working on some disasters and hazards now, um, hopefully trying to tie some more uh, into that disaster lifecycle cluster. And I think that's a it's, a it's a good way to go about it, you know, and also to address some of the goals here and to help Sweet grow um, into, into what this ESIP community wants it to be. Because, you know, it's at a very, um, it's a very interesting space in this whole semantic spectrum. And once we have to figure out how it complements other resources and also does things that they don't, I think then we're enriching the whole earth and environment space. There's, I, would just uh, add quickly, there's... Uh, I, I would just add quickly that when a street was originally built and Rob showed several versions, the knowledge engineering and ontological engineering techniques uh, were not as sophisticated as they are now. And there weren't as many other ontologies or uh, ontological mod modules that could be used. And also there are now additional semantic resources in terms of well-developed and harmonized vocabularies. All of that makes a slightly different context for, for work say with Sweet because there are other things to leverage and also other things to align. And, and uh, Pierre has indicated some of the things that, that uh, is done as part of semantic harmonization within the, in our group. So what I was uh, getting at with the slide on harmonization uh, ties into the harmonization activities we have in the semantic tech committee. So uh, it's you need to effectively when doing an activity like that, it's important to state the degree to which you are actually harmonizing. So as a as a it, it wouldn't be uh, accurate to say that the act, terms are actually are completely harmonized or completely um, aligned if all degrees of abstraction are not considered. One ontology may be importing or using a more abstract uh, upper ontology, but the vocabulary or the ontology to which a term is being mapped or, or supposedly harmonized may not actually be, be complete in the sense of uh, the complete intended meaning because the other ontology may not make the same commitments, the same may not uh, be using or uh, more abstract conceptualizations or models. And so that is a very uh, important point because it, it wouldn't necessarily be complete. And so you need to look into those details as well. I think we have uh, Brandon back. So if, uh, if Brandon wants to uh, provide any input, that'd be great. Uh, on the screen now, everyone should see uh, the GitHub repo for that, I believe someone in the audience one was interested in a demo. Um, we can. Does everyone still see the screen here? Yes. Okay. So this is the uh, GitHub repository for Suite, and you can, for instance, view it in documentation form using uh, this link. And so we see number of the suite modules. And if you click on one, say, so in here we find the classes, so the category terms, and some descriptions. And toward the bottom, we'll also find relational terms. And you can also view it in uh, RDF format. Uh, and you can view it in the community ontology repository. If there's any uh, any ideas or interest or what uh, any person in the audience finds interesting about this, uh, by all means, speak up. I note that actually in the um, document for the meeting, people are answering a lot of those questions. So there are a number of thoughts in there that 
perhaps, Robert, you wanna uh, talk through with the group? Yeah, and Robert, if it's yeah. helpful, I'm seeing some questions in the chat too that I could call up to your attention if, you know, I know you're screen sharing, so it's hard to see both. Hey, I think, um, I think I'm back now, Robert. I'm just trying to figure out where to jump in. Sorry for that. Sure, no worries. Do you mind if I summarize a couple things I'm seeing? Would that be helpful, Rob? Yeah, go ahead. I'm just looking at the uh, chat at the moment. Yeah, it's a lot. I'm glad people are so active. Um, I'm seeing a question or a comment about what support is there for adding suite to various heliophysics resources? Do you feel like that's been addressed? Would you like to address that? Brandon, you want to take that? I'm just trying to find where that is. Uh, yeah, sorry, I only have part of the chat. Yeah, um, in terms of resources to try and add the add the terms, um, I think that's one of the things that we're trying to promote would be the reuse. Uh, so I think there's a lot of there's a lot of terminology in. I mean, it's massive. I think there's eleven thousand classes or concepts in suite and it's massive and trying to get a handle on where it's reused and how it's reused um, is a active sort of area of research I think um, it well certainly in this in this community uh, so it's it's openly licensed which means anybody could reuse it in um, I think it's CC zero so they can use it in any way they see fit uh, which means there's nothing stopping anyone from using the terms in there to tag up their resources I'm not sure if that answers the question. In terms of support, um, you'd probably be best to uh, contact the semantic tech uh, committee or listen in on the call. Um, yeah, and just see if there's any, I'm sure there are other people interested uh, and, and able to work with you or collaborate with you on that. Or, or I can, I'm quite happy to. Is there a tutorial on how to apply suite to new resources? Uh, no. Not that I'm aware of. Actually, um, that's one thing that we are we know we need to work on is the documentation and um, and and tutorials on on how to sort of get started and whether or not you want to use it locally or use uh, uh, call it from the core the service that's supported um, core dot is it core .isafed .org? yeah and a YouTube video that'd be great. Um, that's that was something that was planned in the past and the people that were going to do that ended up not able to so that is still something on the docket that we we're that we we're interested in doing we're sort of um, needing more bandwidth if anybody's interested that would be fantastic yeah that's uh, that's definitely a, a worthwhile direction so, so maybe if anyone's interested uh, developing a sweet manual uh, would be one interesting uh, task. Uh, to do, yeah. mm -hmm. and, and perhaps then to, ch to chime in there, uh, like what we learned from from Envo and other ontologies, different systems may need different kinds of approaches to annotating their resources. You know, some some will use a full web link to a particular ontology class in RDF. Others just want the term with some sort of ID. And so, you know, one would expect as adoption occurs that uh, systems would then develop their own conventions. And it's important that those are documented somewhere so that you know maybe on the sweet wiki or something of that kind uh things are laid out about how a particular community likes to apply this and how their systems read it pick it up and then cross link it back to the to the resource you know there's a lot of freedom on how to do that as long as it's traceable and as long as it points to the same kind of uh, semantic layer that's independent of any implementation system um i'll drop an example for like uh since uh, since abby um even, you know, we talked about mix and uh, in the biological data um, session. And, you know, so there are ontology terms that are used in the mix uh, checklists. And, you know, Envo is one of them. So that cross maps back to Suite, suite too. Um, and so we had, we developed some guidance for um, the mix community who have a very particular way of filling in their, their form. This is not to say that this is the best way to do it for all systems, but this is how they, they did it. So I'd expect pages like that to show up. Um, uh, more and more uh, in, in the sweet world as 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 when and if it's in, it's implemented in system.
So stop me if this is not helpful, but I'm seeing another theme here um, from the air quality co-chair Steve Young, who's very interested in uh, helping users navigate EPA data and possibly expanding suite to have an EPA view. So I'm just calling that out from the notes. Yeah, and, and maybe I should um, just kind of expand on that a tiny bit. Uh, can you hear me? I hope. Yes, we can hear you. <laughs> okay, thanks. Um, we, Megan was in on it. We watched a uh, session yesterday where people were struggling with trying to answer what should be some fairly simple questions about their local environment, working mostly with EPA data. And I, I realized um, there isn't really an obvious framework. And, and I freely admit, I, I don't know to what extent Sweet may already cover some of this. So, you know, full disclosure on that. But watching people struggling, that there's so much specialized knowledge about both the environment as an earth system, but also, you know, if you will, sort of an, an administrative um, view of the environment. Uh, you could think of it, I guess, as a kind of human activities thing. But um, what is the legal framework that's been created of environmental laws that drive what EPA does? And, and then kind of drilling down into organizational structure, because to, to navigate through the systems, you kind of need to understand some of this other stuff that's not really science stuff, it's more like administrative stuff. So sorry, I'm kind of rambling, that, that wasn't very well put, but that, that, that's an issue that I was seeing yesterday and I'm wondering whether Sweet could, could help with that issue to, to help users navigate because there's a there's a lot of data resources out there but it's extremely confusing and fragmented if anyone is interested in uh in uh, actively uh, being a contributor again feel free to go to the uh, github or go to the session agenda page or the question uh the question link so i'm putting it in the chat again and you can put your information in either of those if you like or uh, uh, express what you might be interested in in uh in helping with or what directions you may be interested in using or applying suite So on uh, on my end, uh, that's uh, that's it uh, for for me. Uh, uh, thanks for your attention, your participation. Uh, also, a special thanks to uh, Charlie Haley for uh, her session uh, development uh, uh, guidance, and to ESIP's staff. Uh, I'll leave this uh, leave it open for anyone that wants to. Uh, Provide any input or a talk, so I encourage uh, any any further questions or, or discussion. Awesome, thanks, Rob. Sorry, I couldn't help more. I had some technical issues and wasn't able to follow the chat, so apologies for that. But that was really great. Thank you. Uh, no worries. This is um, this is my first time organizing a session, so thanks for bearing with me as I try to juggle multiple uh, things. But yeah, uh, if anyone else has input uh, or suggestions or directions they'd like to go in uh, for developing suite or, or finding use cases or applications, uh, please uh, express it. Thanks. I think you uh, you drew a lot of interest from folks. There's so much in the chat and a lot in the notes document. And I think maybe a good next step would be to kind of cull through this and maybe have a little summary at the next semantic tech committee meeting and see what what we actually want to follow up on.
Thanks for putting this together. And if I can give a little plug, I hope everyone will join us for the research showcase, which is starting in uh, about 38 minutes. So you have time to take a little break, but it'll be another chance to engage on topics like this and others. Excellent. Thanks, Megan.